This is joint work between uh, myself, uh, Babak Naimi and Thomas Groon, and it's work that developed out of Babak's uh, PhD thesis. Unfortunately, he's not available at the moment. Um, now, what you'll be aware of is that there are several local indicators of spatial association, things like Moran's Eye or Geary C, that are mainly working with continuous data. We've also seen entropy used uh, to quantify spatial contiguity or spatial association in terms of nominal categorical data. And the interest in this topic came up when we were looking at uh, ecological variables for uh, species distribution modeling. And we realized we're looking with a different range of different data types. So we might be working with nominal data. We might be working with continuous data sets. We could be working with ordered categories or indeed hierarchical categories, like, uh, like cover classification schemes. And that led us to propose uh, ELSA. It's an entropy-based local indicator of spatial association. Um, and basically we define E within a neighborhood. So within a neighborhood of lo the location I, uh, a neighborhood that's defined by the radius H. And that's comprised of two components, the dissimilarity, EA, so the dissimilarity um, between I and its neighbours, and uh, the Shannon entropy, which is we can think of as a measure of composition and diversity within the local neighbourhood. So if we break that down, we can look first at dissimilarity. So W defines the local neighbourhood. It uh, takes value of one within the local neighbourhood and zero outside it. Um, we can look at the dissimilarity between that central point I and the categories at the neighbors. And so for, um, for nominal data, that will always be one. And we can also look at the maximum dissimilarity between any two, uh, between I and any of its neighbors. So I've got a, a simple example here, a toy example. We'll see in case A that, um, all the pixels are white, there's uh, zero dissimilarity, so all the pixels are the same, EA is zero, maximum similarity. Whereas in case B, uh, the central pixel is black, the neighbors are all white, so, and we have that maximum level of dissimilarity. We see that also in, e, in cases D and E, where um, uh, the central pixel is, is different from all its neighbors. Um, and we have a, a different value there in C where we have uh, seven white neighbors and one black neighbor. Um, the second part was the Shannon entropy. Uh, we can think of the prob we can think of P here as the uh, probability of event K. So for example, a given land cover occurring, um, we distinguish between MW, which is the number of categories within the local neighborhood and M, which is the number total number of categories in the data sets. And then uh, we normalize by log MI, where MI is either the maximum size of W or M. So again, coming back to the simplified example, uh, that diversity is zero in case A, and it takes some maximum value in case D, where we have that central pixel is white, we have four gray pixels, four black pixels. Uh, it's slightly lower in case E, where there's six gray pixels and, um, we take the same value in B and C because the composition within a local neighborhood is the same in both of those cases, even though the organization of the pixels as shown in the first row is different. Um, so we can combine those together to get our final ELSA statistic. And that's illustrated here in this uh, bottom line. So, um, Sorry, this is actually a three by three neighborhood, not a nine by nine. Um, one of the innovations of ELSA was the idea of how we would work with categories. So we can work, we can think of nominal categories. So dissimilarity is one. We could think of ordered categories. So ordinal data, for example, low, moderate and high air pollution values. So in that example, we have a maximum dissimilarity of two. And we can extend that value towards discretizing continuous data sets. So we can actually apply ELSA also to continuous data. We can also apply it to uh, hierarchical classes. 
So um, we might uh, propose that um, two types of forests, broadleaved and coniferous forest, are more similar, say, than coniferous forest and grassland. So we can handle that also with this dissimilarity measure. So I'm going to give some visual examples here based on um, PM10 data set. So this is a particulate matter less than 10 microns in diameter, concentration given in microgram meter cubed. And this is an event from April 2009. And we've chosen this event because we published on it previously. So we have the data set and it's, it's been published in other papers. So we have this high pollution event over Northern Europe. So Northern Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, France and relatively low values of um, uh, PM10 elsewhere. So we worked first with the um, continuous data set and calculate ELSA for the continuous data set. Um, we find then if we look at that northern area, so northern Germany, Belgium and Netherlands, we have uh, a kind of a moderate level of dissimilarity and a high level of diversity. So we've got quite a big range of high values of, of air pollution. Um, we could contrast that with the situation in Spain and Portugal, where we've got a relatively low dissimilarity and a kind of a moderate diversity. We also see a similar situation in um, Czech Republic and Austria. So we see then this low value of ELSA over Spain and Portugal and that more moderate value in Northern Europe. Now, to try to support the um, visualization of these data, uh, we've also categorized these into ordered categories. So we have um, defined those low, medium and high values, um, sorry, low, medium and high values. So low is less than 20, high is bigger than 50 and moderate is everything in between. And we've um, computed those L statistics now on the category, on the ordered category. Um, and this uh, assessment of ordered categories is something we hadn't tried before in previous work. So we see now rather a different picture because we now have this cluster of very high values over Northern Europe, which show um, a high value of this, sorry, a low value of dissimilarity over Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, a low value of diversity, but a bigger value of diversity if we look then into um, Germany. Um, and we see then this kind of a strong level of spatial association over uh, the, the Netherlands and Belgium, similarly over Western Spain and Portugal and over um, um, Austria and uh, Czech Republic. So I'm just going to wrap up by saying something about H. Um, so all these statistics up and now have been calculated with a, a H of 150 kilometers. Um, but we can think, if we think of Tobler's first law of geography, we expect that as H increases, the dissimilarity will increase, the diversity will increase, and the spatial association will tend to decrease. So we might think, for example, we might want to identify the scale of spatial association. So we've tried this now with uh, increasing the level of H and we find actually we, we still identify that strong cluster, for example, over Portugal and Western Spain and over Belgium and the Netherlands. But that's um, that that high L, high value of those L, sorry, those low value of the L statistics, they start to increase as we increase the um, spatial, we increase H. And we'll see, for example, the scale of this event over the Netherlands and uh, Germany seems to be something between 450 and 600 kilometers. So to wrap up then, um, ELSA, including all of its components, so the L statistic E, the um, dissimilarity and the diversity provide a new set of statistics for exploring spatial structure. And these can handle a range of different data sets, nominal, ordinal, and continuous data. And these can uh, support um, data exploration. Uh, there are some points we need to look at going forward. Now we have addressed some of this in our publications, but there's also further work to do here. 
we really want to move from kind of um, exploratory analysis also more towards inferential statistics. And there's some work on that if you look at the previously published paper. And we need to look in more depth at how these, how we can use these three components for evaluating spatial structure, but uh, maybe also use them going forward in, in other types of modeling. And we'd like to consider a, a, a wider range of applications. Okay, so uh, I'm finished uh, and I'll leave you with the two, uh, two publications here. Um, we've got a couple of questions coming into the chat here. Um, and yeah, a couple of minutes for questions. So one um, from Stefano saying, have you considered how to develop a, um, an indicator of significance, for the clusters? Um, so yes, uh, if you look at the paper in the Spatial Statistics Journal, there is some discussion of this actually. So um, we've done this by, um, um, a permutation approach, so by uh, shifting around the uh, location, so we have been able to get the significance of the clusters. I haven't actually reported that that here. I think it's something we need to. We've presented it in principle. It's not really kind of fully available now, yet in the um, the ELSA package that you can find on on CRAN actually. So I, I just saw the other question there. ELSA is available in R. So if you just put ELSA into Google, uh, you'll find it on uh, the, the R website. You'll find it, you'll, you can just type install packages ELSA. Great, so that's answered our um, second question. And then probably just time for this final question um, from Mohammed saying, what if we have um, UG utilities and we aren't sure about how accurate the data is? Um, to build the GIS platform. So a question around kind of the accuracy of the data, I think there. I'm not sure what a UG utility is, but uh, yeah, so it's a good question. I would expect if we're not, sh if the, the data are uncertain, um, there may be, more variability in them than you might might be simply attributed to the um, spatial structure in the data. Um, yeah, what we what we what we see is when we have more diversity in the data, um, ELSA tends to increase. So it tends to. Uh, reduce your level of spatial association so that could be a concern i guess if the data are uncertain yeah okay okay utilities data right um food for thought then it's, it's food for thought we haven't actually evaluated um um uncertainty in these type of data and the effect on the else statistic 